So of course, being our last sip of the year, it only made sense that we'd have this very special guest tonight, one of my favorite people in the world, the star of the number one movie this weekend. Please welcome Miss Yvonne Orji. Nigerians in the house. Can we get her a mic real quick, please? Oh, it's behind her. Oh, behind me. Here you go. It is that big girl. I was surprised. I told you I saw that episode. I was like, Yvonne got ass. Issa sent me a screenshot and was like, girl, where did that come from? I said, I don't know. But I'll keep it. Um, so, first off, you know, as tradition, <laughs> we typically, for those of you who are new, we take a shot um, just to get it warmed up. And if you guys have drinks in your hand, I would love for you to take a shot with us. Issa's trying to take advantage of me. I always am. All right, cheers. What would you like to toast to, Yvonne? Ooh, to bigger and better and blacker. Woo! I like that. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Ooh. How you feel? <laughs> well, 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 <laughs> well, next question, next question. <laughs> um, happy Insecure season finale day. Girl, we did it three seasons. Three seasons, oh, bitch. <laughs> we out here. Um, you've been touring, you've been doing comedy shows, you've been killing it. Um, you opened for Chris Rock during... Uh, between our first and second season? Or second, uh, between our second and third season. Mm -hmm. And it's absolutely- a little known comedian, just I mean, I think. <laughs> Amazing is after all that you've been doing, like acting, you've been producing, you've been writing, is stand-up still your first love? Um, well, Chris made sure to tell me that it had to be. He was like, girl, uh, this acting thing is cool, but like, don't lose comedy, because I was, I, my initial thought for comedy was to transition to acting, like to use it as a springboard and never use it again. And he was like, well, that's stupid. <laughs> well, no, he was more like, that's dumb. <laughs> he was like, comedy is, is crap. And I was like, what? It's heroin. And I was like, I don't know these drug references, Chris Rock. He's still in New Jack City? Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Going through withdrawal? <laughs> it's like heroin. No, you're, you really got to attach that role, huh? Um, so he was essentially saying, like, don't lose the thing that makes you different from other actors, which is your ability to, be, to do comedy, which he was right. Um, but I still, it still scares the crap out of me every time I do comedy. Even though I know, like, it's a sold out show or I, I got an hour material, I'm st every time I'm just like, <laughs> what if they don't laugh? And then I hear my name, I'm like, I did that. That's I what did I did. That I do that. Well, I wanted to do a roll call real quick, which we typically do. How many actors are in the audience? Okay. Oh, hello. Some of y'all not claiming it. It's not going well. <laughs> How many people are writers? Yeah. Uh, producers? Okay. Comedians? Yes. Represent. Right. So you initially chose two professions, and we'll yes. get to how you got to this, but like you've chosen two professions that deal with a lot of rejection. <laughs> like you get, as an actor, you hear no a lot. A lot. And as a stand-up, like you just mentioned, like you can be on stage and- It's people, immediate rejection. It's a, <laughs> and, and it usually sounds like this. <laughs> Silence is the worst kind of rejection. Oh, oh y'all didn't like that one? Okay, okay, I got, I got another one, I got another I got one. one. I got, I got I one. one. So you actually just rejected me in the back room, but it's I fine. did. We're not gonna go into it because mm -hmm. it was not. It wasn't great, but that's what friends are for—to tell you, girl, hey. no, no, try again. Is that? Well, you have to have a, a tough skin. So did you have a tough skin before pursuing stand-up and acting, or did you kind of develop it over time? Well, I'm African, so by default, you have to have a tough skin when your parents call you foolish goats. And that's on a Tuesday. I feel like, you know what, I think I'm gonna make it. <laughs> um, but I was also bullied, I was also, so this is also why I didn't wanna do comedy. I was bullied as a kid, and when you know rejection, just because you're 
living your best life and people don't like you, then you're gonna put yourself in a, in a, in a profession where you willingly could get rich. Like that didn't make sense to me. I was like, Jesus, are you sure about this? And it was, if, if, if it wasn't God that told me to do comedy, I would never do it. Cause it's, it's the dumbest thing in the world. Like, why would you do this? Like I have two whole degrees that I was paid Sally Mae for. I did not need, I, not, I didn't need this in my life, but I'm, I'm so happy I have it in my life. Well, we talked about our like respective middle school traumatic experiences and you have called out your bully on multiple occasions. <laughs> by name. No, I'm just talking about <laughs> it was more than one, but I think it was like tight. No, that's the only that's the one that I'm gonna name. There were others. Well, I wanna know like Jamila. Cause you <laughs> Shamila was in area Jamila. I think Jamila. Was, yeah. Did you like look them up on Facebook? Did no. you find them? <laughs> they gonna look me up though. <laughs> So can you talk about two moments? One, what was your first, oh, I'm, I'm fucking funny moment. Like, when did you realize, like, oh, I got jokes? The first time I did comedy, it was successful. The very, and I think if I had bombed, y'all would not see me. Because I, like, <laughs> if it went back, because I was also performing in front of Africans, and we we're rude and racist, okay? We're the worst <laughs> people in the world. Because they won't even, like, silence is better than what Africans do. Africans be like, who is this child's mother? <laughs> Tell them to come and get her. Like, it's just, that's worse than just like silence. And so I was like, if I can make it there, I can make it anywhere. But you had to know that you were funny before you took that no, stage. No, girl, so I did not. So you were not. cracking jokes like with friends. You weren't like, I got him. Susie, I don't know why you have a friend named Susie, but I killed Susie today. <laughs> Just go with it. It was Just one Puerto Rican girl that was funny. I wish I could remember her name. She was like the one nice girl to me. She wore high-waisted jeans. Wait, so just to get this straight. <laughs> From middle school to college, you was getting pumped? No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga. <laughs> then that would be my fault. <laughs> I was like, clearly you're doing something wrong. It's not everybody. <laughs> no girl from third grade to eighth grade. <laughs> I'm sorry, no, no, no. So, <laughs> no, no, it's just specific. I feel you, I feel you, I feel you. Cause, cause I know those five years. Those five years were traumatic. It was five third years were traumatic. So after eighth grade, I were you just away. focusing on studying? And... No, my mom put me in an all-girls boarding school. Mm. So I got a fresh start in Amish country, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Woo. Well, yeah. you were still, I mean, you, you said you got, a, you got two degrees. One was the master's in public health. Yeah. Um, Okay, and then you healthcare went to, workers. Yeah. We you went to you. Liberia. I did. To avoid telling your parents that you weren't going to middle school, yes. medical school. You were buying time. Because I was a punk. I was. I get it. I was a punk. I was also like the good Nigerian daughter. Like everything, like I got straight A's. I would cry if I got an A minus because I just knew my mom would be like 98. <laughs> <laughs> That's not that loud to tell. So I was literally like, I have to be an A student. I was National Honor Society, all of these things. And so I was on a specific track, but I knew the moment I tell my parents, like, oh, I'm not going to med school. Well, the moment I did tell them, my mom cried. My dad almost threw a pot. It was a thing. A pot or a pie? Well, he was a pot. He was making scrambled eggs. And I was like, oh, I see this ending badly. <laughs> But God bless it. My so mom, you told them in the morning time? You started a, their day fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. I didn't really plan it. I didn't really, because at some point, I was doing a lot of tiptoeing. I was like, ah. And with our parents, you just have to rip the band-aid off. So mm -hmm. I bought a ticket to go on, a, on the Bolt bus to New York. Problem was, I didn't have a ride to get to the bus. I didn't plan this out. <laughs> so, so I was like, Mom, Dad, I'm leaving. My mom's like, where are you going? I said, I I thought I told you I'm, I'm moving to New York. If I die today, I was like, why? Why are you dying? What, what happened? I didn't know. So like she starts crying. It was like, why are you doing this to me? My father is like making scrambled eggs. And then he like turns with the pan. And I was like, this could end badly. <laughs> and then after like he yelled, I was like, cool, cool, cool. But can someone give me a ride? To <laughs> It was a very long 15 minute uh, car ride with my dad to the bus stop. He gave me a ride. So eventually, from New York, from you New made York. the move to LA? Mm -hmm. So you're one of those people that 
kind of packed up everything on a whim because you got a writing job to go to LA or was there something before that? No, I, I got an unpaid internship. Like I literally was on the bus to New York. I lie to you not, I didn't have a place to stay. Again, I didn't plan this out. I was like, I gotta get out of Laurel, Maryland. And on the bus, a woman I met one time in Liberia called me and was like, hey, what are you doing? I missed your call. I said, I'm on my way to New York. She's like, oh, where are you staying? I said, I don't, I don't oh know yet. God. And she was like, well, come stay with me. And I stayed with her for six months, rent free. Wow. What a blessing. Girl, because I was about to be, I want to live in America, in America. <laughs> so when you eventually made the move to LA, some of the, so many of the questions that I get are like, how do you find your people? And you've been just very, very, um, you've been outspoken about the people around you, who you've met, who have supported you, who you support. How did you find those people to, and, and, who, and, and who are those people that kind of supported you that you can look at and be like, oh, they, they were instrumental in my journey? Absolutely, so before I even got here, I reached out to our friend, um, the late Michael Ajakwe on Facebook. And I just was like, that is an Igbo name. Uh, he's doing something in Hollywood. And I was just like, hey, you don't know me, but I don't know what I want to do, so I want to figure out what I don't like. You sent that as like a blind message? It was. I was yes, because I was like, hey, you're Nigerian. My parents want to be a doctor. You're a writer. I'm like, I don't know what that means because I, I didn't know what writing. I was like, we were raised to be creative. Guys, I was taking organic chemistry. There's nothing creative about it. And so I was just like, I know I've been doing comedy, but I feel like I want to do acting. But, you know, who knows? Maybe I want to be a director or a producer. I don't even know if I'm good at acting, but can you give me a, a shot to figure out what I'm not good at or like learn what I don't want to do? And he was just like, I'm busy right now, which, which was real, because he was finding the, uh, the wet fest. Oh, yeah. And he was like, hit me back in two months. Two months, I hit him back. Um, I, in, the time, in the meantime, I sent him like a tape of me doing, a CD of me doing comedy. Turns out his brother was getting married, so his family was at his house. They played the DVD. He called me and was like, yo, you funny. I was like, I, mm -hmm, I was trying to tell you. <laughs> and he was like, you, you need to be in LA. I was like, also what I was trying to tell you. So he was like, well, let me see what I could do for you. And it was just all timing because it's like he never forgot. The, the season had to match up for like, his parents and like his family to be at the house. He was like, you made my mom laugh. No one makes my mom laugh. I said, your mom needs to get out much more. Like, it's really sad. And so. Why you dissing mama? No, but I was just like, no one makes, I was like, live a little, live a little, it's okay, you gotta laugh. And so then he made a call to Stacey Evans Morgan, uh, who works with Bentley Kyle Evans. Um, they were doing a show at the time called Love That Girl, which Martin Lawrence was producing. And so he said, uh, I told Stacey about you, mind you, like maybe a month before this call, I just was like, I'm gonna buy a ticket to LA just on a whim. I used to host weddings. So I was like, I'm gonna cancel all my wedding hosting because that was what was making me money. But I was like, I feel like I need to buy a ticket and I'm gonna buy my ticket for August 2nd. Stacey called me and was like, yeah, the writer's room starts tomorrow, August 2nd. Wow. I lie to you not. And she was just like, we'll love to have you. And I was like, uh, I land at six. She was like, just come the next day. I get there. She goes, I know you. I'm like, how? Do I owe you money too? <laughs> and she was like, no. I ghost produced a comedy special that never aired, but you're funny. I'm an unpaid intern, but because she saw me do comedy, she gave me clout in the writer's room. I was like, Yvonne, do you have a joke? Pitch it. And I was like, I, I will, I will have a joke. So that's literally how that happened. So that's like the first couple of people that I met in LA. And then I just started going to church because my thing was like, I need to meet good people. Everyone kept telling me like, people in LA are phony or they're not nice. And I was like, well, if I'm nice, surely I'll meet other nice people. And I did. So. <laughs> I was very naive, <laughs> but it was true, it worked out. And, you know, I wondered, and you've spoken about this before, like so many of our comedy greats have gotten started when they were like 14, 15 or early 20s, you know? So was there ever a moment that entered your mind where you were like, I'm, I might be too old for this? Yes, when my mom said, you're too old for this. <laughs> That's exactly what she told me. Because <laughs> I left Liberia to embark on New York when I was 25. 
So my mom was like, everybody that's trying to do this thing started when they were 12. I was like, well, <laughs> who's entering comedy clubs at 12? I don't know. But it, there definitely was. My mom's a huge supporter now, guys. <laughs> She's great. That was her way of inspiring me to do something else. Um, <laughs> but no, I, like when 30 crept up and I was like still eating cereal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, 2% milk, I had standards. Um, <laughs> two percent? Listen, this is the best I could do. Um, it was always on sale at the Good 99 milk. cent store, which is also where I got my groceries. Yeah, I can't. You talked about getting peanuts there. I was like, the 99 cent girl? Listen, the, the, it, the groceries die so much faster, like the produce. You weren't getting but produce But they're 99 there. cents. Eat it quickly. But you were getting the produce there, too? Yes. Girl, we got a lot of stuff there. Like, well, you're still alive, so. It worked out. And then my agents gave me like a gift card to the 99 cent store. <laughs> I'm sure it went a long way. I was, it did, and I went back. I was like, you know what? I need some arts and crafts. You can get arts and crafts. You can get grapes. Just... I don't understand the problem. I love that, that grocery list that's like arts and crafts, also grapes. And I was Peter. making my vision board. <laughs> oh, I was getting vision board supplies for the okay. 99 cent store. So I'm, so, I'm sitting like this guy because this dress is cutting up circulation but it looks to my great. rib cage. <laughs> Y'all are like, is she posing? No, I'm trying to breathe, okay? <laughs> Through my esophagus. <laughs> I can't. So, take a step. First of all, I would like to point out that out of all, you know what I'm about to say. Out of all of our sip guests, some don't drink, which is fine. Uh, Yvonne is 30 and still bring, drinks Malibu, which is like alcoholic Capri Sun. Bless you. Bless you. And she you know what? Like, and it's cut like, with lemonade and Sprite. Cause it's too she was like, I still got to cut it. So she's drinking diabetes in a cup, guys. So pray for her. I'm drinking NyQuil. I'm you drinking are. cold NyQuil. Um, grow up. Like <laughs> like Moscato post. and Malibu. Like, just don't drink alcohol anymore. Because you just don't have... It really is just Capri Sun with a kick. That's how I like it. But you still add stuff to it. It's like if somebody adds Sprite to Capri Sun. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Because... Okay, so <laughs> I didn't get to ask you the second part of my question. The first part of my question was, when did you know you were funny? When did you realize, like, because this is different. Okay. Like, I'm funny, and sometimes people use humor as a defense mechanism. When did you realize, like, I'm a bad bitch? Did that come before or after realizing you were funny? I don't know if I've ever stopped to... To say, you know what, Psh, you a bad B. I don't believe that because I've seen an Instagram video where it's clear. What? I've seen a pose where you was like, it was like a bad bitch pose. So, I mean, I definitely have the pose down, but I don't think I've been like, girl, you know who you are? <laughs> <laughs> you... I prefer other people to tell me I'm a bad bitch. This is real. That's I mean, real. There, there are definitely moments, that, no, there are definitely moments where like either I'll get off the stage or I'll do something and be like, Psh, girl, you were good. Like... You know what, you did that. I'm proud of you. I, tell, I say that to myself. So, one of the things that and you so, told me- Wait, wait, I, mm -hmm. I will say, I think the first time like one of my ad-libs made it to Insecure, I was like, I did it, I'm funny, I'm funny. Because y'all, y'all, y'all don't understand. The Insecure script is like Fort Knox. Like nothing is, nothing goes in, nothing goes out. <laughs> is it, like, we wrote it, nigga, we know what we're doing. <laughs> You stick to acting, ho. And I'm like, you're right, you're right, you're not wrong. And then, except for like Natasha, who's like the improv queen, like Natasha makes anything queen. phenomenal. So I think the one time, uh, well, I would say the, the time from this season, when they were like, when I was like, oh, can I, can, we, can I just do a run? Can we keep the camera going? And they were like, all right, we'll try it. And then I think it was either Dana or Amy that was like, we hope it's worth it. <laughs> what? Somebody was like, make it, it better be funny. So I'm like, I'm start sweating. I'm like, oh, Jesus. I should have probably just stopped while I was ahead. We already got the take. But then I did something. I can't even remember what it was. I know it was in Molly's office. And they yelled, cut. And everyone in Video Village was like, ah, ha, ha. I was like, nigga, I'm bad. I did that. I did that. I did that. I earned my key. Paychecks, cash that. <laughs> Get at me, homie. It was all the things. It was I wish you remembered the ad lib. You don't even remember it after all that. I was very proud of it. All I know is I made them laugh. I don't even care if it got cut. It might have gone cut. 
but in that moment, you did it. I did it. Well, can we talk about insecure? Because you just told me like. I want to say a month ago, I don't know, or maybe a couple months ago. All the time is running together. You've been drinking but there too was much. A, I was. I've been doing that too. Um, there was a, de- a time where you told me about your first insecure moment, like feeling insecure being on set. Like, so you went from five auditions. Five. To landing the part and starring in your first television series. Yes. And when, I think at audition four, when we table read, and then when we um, chemistry read. Chemistry read, yeah. Yo, I walked out that joint like, Psh, if they don't want me, <laughs> they don't even know what they want. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> I was still, I was still, I was, man, I was walking down Beverly Hills like, ah, <laughs> skipped to my living like, I think I skipped, I don't know. My meter was expired, it didn't matter. <laughs> Cause poor. And then I think <laughs> the fifth, the, <laughs> why were all the auditions in Beverly Hills? Anyway, don't worry about it. Um, yeah, shout out to three <laughs> Poverty. Then the fifth audition, I cried in my car. I was like, it's cool. I don't even need this job. <laughs> what was, was the fifth audition? The, 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 the network the, test? No, the test. The fifth the audition test, was the yeah. test. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, they, they made me feel like, like I, I distinctly, distinct, distinctly remember Prentice's, like, encouragement laugh, which is one of those, <laughs> like, dad moments where it's like, it's all right. It's all right. You go. <laughs> because during the audition, they're like him, Melina, everyone is like encouraging, and it's like, ah, we having fun. At the test, it was it was like midnight. It was darkness. It was not midnight. It was like <laughs> it felt like midnight. Yeah, it was not that. <laughs> it, felt, it felt like the the Michael Jackson video. <laughs> Which one? Because the, okay. the one you the girl the one you was in the one you in right now. <laughs> First of all, I came in, and Yvonne called me Wolverine. <laughs> so, don't make me laugh, I'm gonna pop this dress. I called her Wolverine. It's even like Wolverine went to college. Logan. I'm gonna fuck you up when we get off this. Cool. Thing. Um, it was like, it was just darkness. It was like in an auditorium. And nobody was smiling. Everybody was in suits. Nobody cared about life. It was just like... None of that is true. I just want you to know. But continue your story. It felt like that to me. That's that's my narrative, okay? You're right. My mic, thank you. And it was like two other... It was so... Here's what I don't think I ever told you. It was like two other girls auditioning for Molly. And we were all waiting. And they were like, you know, I've just been praying to God. So I was like, oh, all y'all been praying to God too? <laughs> I was like, I thought that was my trump card. So we all Christians? Oh, hell. I was like, well, Jesus, well, one of your daughters is going to get it, but can it be me? You know? I was like, oh you, oh, you go to church? Oh, regularly? Oh, okay, cool. Well, you pay tithes? No, I'm just... I was trying to figure out who's going to get eliminated. So, so, then, so then I'd go and I'd do it, and literally... When we were doing it in front of Vicky, Vicky was like, whenever you're ready. And it's like, oh, okay, let's start. I have the first lines, y'all. I have the first lines. Mickey just... Oh, me. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and, like, that was, that's how it started. And then, like, I'm doing it. And it was dead silence. And I hear Prentice go... <laughs> like, he stopped his own laughter. <laughs> it was like, like, I don't know if this is allowed. And in that moment, I was like, pretend like you're bombing a comedy set but you got five minutes and we finish. We don't walk off the stage. You, you do your five minute set. And then I was like walking up the, 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 the Green Mile staircase. And I heard one of the execs like, all right, so what do we think about that one? Nigga, wait for me to get out the room. Wait, that one? My name is Yvonne. You don't, it doesn't matter. It's okay. Well, you made it. Uh, but one of the things that you told me just a month ago that I didn't know is, you know, once after you got the part, you know, the doubt didn't go away. And no. in our minds, we were like, this is, this is Molly. You know, Yvonne is Molly. We're so excited. And like I said, you just told me a couple months ago about your first day first on day. set when, in our perspective, like, you were killing it. But what was going through your head? So, you know, we were auditioning maybe the first, the, like, the same four pages each time. So it's like, four, you, you can... You can conjure up how to do four pages well. Then you get a whole script. And I remember one scene. It was when 
in the pilot, Molly was like walking to the car, going to meet the people from the, the league. It was that scene when she was walking around. And it was like acting and, that, and, and like choreogra choreography at yeah. the same time. My, my accent comes out sometimes. I was like, choreography. I, just, I was like, I didn't, know, I didn't know what I was going to say. And so Prentice was like, all right, um, uh, can, you, can you do it this way? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I can. And he was like, I did it that way. He was like, actually, can you do it this way? And I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll figure it out. I did it that way. He was like, no. And he asked me to do it like four different ways. Y'all, I, I wanted to cry on set. I was like, never let him see you sweat. <laughs> I went home and cried. I was like, if they didn't want me, why don't they just tell me? Because I heard people get recast after the pilot. And I just... <laughs> Because I was just like, I don't, like, I was like, I don't know what he wants from me. And I was like, I thought I was giving it to him. So then the next day, you know, it was that moment of like, you know what? If I'm, if I'm going to go down, I'm at least know why. So I was like, hey, Prentice, like, can I talk to you for a second? <laughs> like, I took him to the principal room. I was like, I just, I just feel like I don't know what's going on. I feel like I'm, 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 like, I'm messing things up, and I don't want to mess up your show. He was like, what are you talking about? I said, well, you know, yesterday you had me do the same scene, like, like five different times, and I, I just, I don't know what you want. He was like... Oh, no, I'm thinking about editing. You were doing it right, and I just wanted options. You were giving them to me. I was like, nigga, lead with that next time. I need you to lead with the combo. Syrup sandwich. You're amazing also. Like, I just... So that's when I was like, oh, okay. I, I literally was like, they're going to fire me. Thank so, you for not firing. No, I mean, and, and that was such a valuable lesson, just hearing, hearing that, of just, like, leading with feedback, because in our minds, we were still trying to figure the show out, so we're trying to make the best show possible. So to know that you felt inadequate for any moment was just, like, a, a wake-up call for us and even just the delivery of... Because sometimes as creatives, we can be so focused on our final product that we don't think about, you know, the actors in the process, the editors in the process, the other people in it. So it's just so important to, to lead with that, to lead with that you're doing great, but we're just trying to figure shit out. It has nothing to do with you. Yeah, and it, but it was also my very first time, and this is like HBO, so it was just like, oh, hell, like, should I have been a, a guest star first, maybe? You know, like, it was just, <laughs> it was, it was just like my first time, so I didn't, I didn't know, like, I was the... World of like acting on like a like set set was new, so it was just like I don't. It was foreign, so I'm like, is this part of the process? Am I being too sensitive? Because in our securities, we do have insecurities. So part of mine is feeling like, am I a failure? Sometimes I'd be like, maybe I'm not that good. Well, one of that I feel I feel like you are just one of the most giving people that I've ever met in my life. Like, you're constantly considering what other people's needs are. You're, you're quick to be like, oh, I'll provide it, like, even if you'll find a way to have it. And in this industry, just hearing you even say that earlier, like, if I'm nice, people will be nice. Have you found that people have been receptive to that, or have you found that people take advantage of that? I think it's a little bit of both. I've definitely been taken advantage of, but it's twofold. Whenever I'm taken advantage of, I'm like, well, that's cool. This is this is the end of our relationship. Like, there's nothing more you can get or give to or from me, so I bid you adieu. Um, and then, because here's the thing, for everyone that takes advantage of you, there's five people who are looking to, to, for you to help them. So you can't, you can't be like, well, I ain't never gonna help nobody because that person, no, that person just doesn't know their value and their worth. And so they are trying to do a crabs in a barrel or not be as, um, uplifting or helpful, well, they're going to get everything that comes their way, which is nothing. And so, that's fine. That's fine. I will focus on the, my energy towards the people who want to reciprocate and give and pull other people up because that's what makes the world go around. You're good luck. And the person, thank you. And the persons that have taken advantage of me, I still see them. <laughs> and they see me. I do. I get, I, get, I get the text message. I'm like, you thought I was going to respond? Kill yourself. <laughs> so proud. I'm sure you are. I hate, I hate the so proud. I'm so proud. Nigga, how? How are you so proud? You don't get to be so proud. You. I've been watching you, and I, I fucks with you. I'm proud of you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yo, ma, put me on. I was like, uh, and it was so, it's so, it's just so sad because I, like, people underestimate 
the power of the come up. You underestimate, like, you're going to see me again. You're going to see, see us again. Like, so I wrote back, I'm real passionate about it. No, because it's like, I feel like as much as possible, I try not to burn bridges. Obviously, I'm sure I have. Like, no one's perfect. But, like, when you deliberately just crap on somebody, it's like, you don't think karma comes back to you harder? Like, how? But I feel like even... <laughs> Your faith has played such a huge part in your journey, like even thinking about how you were ready to give up, how you, you know, asked God at one point, like, What's am up? I supposed to be doing this? What's up? You know, I've been trying. I've been out here. How long were you in L.A. Wait, before you were like, uh, this so is a lot? 2011 to 2014, October 2014, I was about to be out. And what was the straw that broke the camel's back for you? One of these niggas that crapped on me. Real talk. Elaborate. Like, Put them on uh, blast. No, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> they don't deserve to be named. Like, they don't even deserve to be named, but I'll tell you what happened. So, there was a network um, that was, like, promising, like, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And was like, <laughs> you know how they do. They were like, you know, we want to give you your own show. We're going to give you a cow <laughs> with the show. And I was like, oh, bet. And the whole time, I, they were talking, because my ultimate goal is to take over for Ellen. It is. I do. I want a, like a daytime talk show. Like I, I just want to be able to give away scholarships. To be honest, so I just you have the dance moves. So I have the dance. So um, so when I was thinking about like oh I'm like the Yvonne Orji show this is great because then this will help me like work that muscle eventually I'll get to put I was already I already had the guest list every every young creative that I knew of I was like I'm gonna put them on I'm gonna highlight their business it was like. You have to give me the show because it's going to bless, like, a ton of other people. And so they were like, cool, 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 cool. But while we're working on your contract and everything, you know, we want to do a lot of things. Are there other creatives that you can suggest? Uh, yes! I know this person and this person and this person and that person. And they were like, cool. Like, a month and a half went by and I was like, yo, where is this contract? Like, bro, like, I need this to eat. And then I got a phone call from the wife of the person and was oh, the person, one of the people I suggested, and she was like, I hate making this phone call because I'm almost like I don't know who I married. Like, he is trying to step over you to get a better deal. The wife the said wife. that? They the messy as fuck. The wife. <laughs> what? No, nah, she was just a real one. He was messy. Hey, baby, I'll see you upstairs in a minute, okay? <laughs> Hold on, I just gotta make this call. <laughs> he's, he's trying to fuck you, girl. Just like you fucked me. <laughs> no, that just means uh, Jesus had my back. That's what that meant. And so she was theirs. He you didn't have their back. Because no. obviously, you, all, you also have to ask yourself, what was he doing for her to be like, nigga, I'm not going to be loyal to you? Karma. Mm. So then I was like, cool, cool, cool. They finally sent me the contract. They essentially wanted to pay me in high fives and handshakes. <laughs> and now... But then owned my name in perpetuity. I was like, stab yourself. <laughs> but it was like, I had had like three months of a buildup of like, this is my big break. Like, I'm down to nothing. Like, please let this thing come about because I put all my egg for this thing going through. They ended up getting him, paying him. I was seen on his Instagram, like he was going to work and bait him more. And I was just like, God, I was, I was nice. Like, I gave nice, I, I, helped, I helped him. How? And it was just like, when you've been knocked down a couple of times, like, the first time you get up, you shake it up. The second time, you're like, ah. Third time, you're like, maybe I should just stay down. It's easier. It's easier. Nobody, nobody's hitting you when you're down already. What they gonna do, kick you? It's, it don't matter. And uh, thank God for my roommate at Salute Weathers, because she would come home and be like, I don't live with a vampire. Open these drapes. It was dark. It was dark, and I was like, ah. You want light? <laughs> then I would go to my room, and then I, I had blackout shades. Uh. And then after a while, when you're the person that normally gives light, when you're the person that's normally upbeat and happy, and you got a prayer for somebody, you got an encouraging word for somebody, it's just so crushing to just... It's also tiring. Like, I'm, I'm too African to be like, I'm just tired. I'm, things are bad. Woe is me. After a while, you're like, you know what? My mother came here from a whole other country. Uh, you can make it. You know? <laughs> and... And I finally, it was steps, though. I was like, okay, uh, I'm going to shower today. 
Okay. So um, were you depressed? Do you think I, you were was, depressed? Depression was like knocking at the door. It was, it was like, come over here. And uh, I showered one day and I was like, I'm going to shower and put new clothes on. I'm going to shower, brush my teeth. Does I have a washing machine in the unit or? <laughs> Just that, trying to get a feel will of Will that was... help you paint the picture? Yeah, it will. <laughs> you thought I was hand washing? Was it handmade like... tail? You think I'm hand washing my <laughs> I just want another full picture. Uh, Somebody's going through that right now. Okay. I washed my clothes. <laughs> okay, that's all I asked. <laughs> and then it would be like, okay, shower, put makeup on, and then leave the house. Just whatever it is, just at least you be prepared. And um, that's what I did. And I remember I left the house and I went to the NBC Shortcuts Film Festival. And it was in October. And, you know, you're going there to celebrate young creatives who have, like, done work. And now people are looking at that work and maybe they get a holding deal or a development deal. And I kept it together. I was like, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. And I walked out those doors and I crumbled. I just started crying. I cried. I was like, God, I'm, I, I can't. I was like, I'm going home. I have a, a family that loves me. I have food ready to be eaten. I'm eating salads with no protein. Think of how. <laughs> no, real talk. Esther was an assistant in her job, and she would call me. And she's like, all right, um, somebody ordered an extra meal, but they left. You want it? I said, yes. She was like, you could either come get it. I was like, I don't have gas. She was like, I'll be home at 630. And it was like noon. I was like, well, at least I know by 7 I'm going to eat. Let me just fast. I called everything a fast. <laughs> but, like, that's the relationship we had. And when I crumbled on Sunset Boulevard, I cried. Um, mm, mm, mm. And um, I heard God say, what's in your hand? And that's why I was like, nigga, ain't nothing in my hand. And I talked to Jesus just like that, just so, in case you guys are wondering, I definitely called him the N-word. Um, it works. And he, he was like, you're not you when you're hungry. <laughs> Or tired, nigga, go to sleep. <laughs> Wait, who do you think you turned into before you have a Snickers? I say Cicely Tyson, and then I'm, then I'm back to me. Who do you turn into? That's who you turn into, Cicely? I That's turned who? into Cicely, yeah. That was, that was Cicely from uh, How to Get Away with Murder. That's Viola's walk. No, but that's Viola, but Cicely was her mother, remember? You're right, okay, so Cicely, Cicely you, you don't even know what? who you turn into. <laughs> Kill yourself. I know, my, I know my black, I know my black walks. Do I turn into? Yeah. DMX pre-crack. <laughs> uh, where my food at? <laughs> Keep talking about Jesus. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, God was like, go to bed. And you know, I can't be too angry at Jesus for like a long time because like <laughs> that doesn't work. And the next day I grabbed my Bible and at for real, Psalms 31, 14, I wasn't even highlighted. It was nothing. It was like a random obscure verse. And it said, I will yet trust you because my times are in your hands. And there was something about that verse. I can't even, it just gripped me. I was like, oh, you're right. Because in my mind, I was like, well, if my times are in your hands, it don't matter how long it's going to take. It's going to work out. So let me start today and figure it out. And God was like, remember that show I told you about three years ago that I told you to write that you didn't write because you were busy yourself making money for other people? Yeah, that one started. And that's and that was first gen. That was first gen. And um, literally a year later, like from October to October, uh, we met Oprah at 36 cents. And then October of 2015, I booked in Secure and I paid off my car and brought my mom to LA. You have impeccable timing. And then this year, I saw myself on Sunset Boulevard on an effing billboard and cried again because I was like, that was the same street. <laughs> I was crying. <laughs> Real talk, I called my mom on WhatsApp when I went to see the billboard at the 9,000. I called her. I was like, Ooh. she's like, what's wrong? I was like, I'm happy. Then why are you crying? Like, it was just like, you're missing the point, mom. I was like, look at, she's like, well, don't scare me. I was like, yeah, I got to call you back. <laughs> so I got the uh, five-minute warning, but before we open up to questions, I'll decide which one to ask. You can answer. Okay. Okay, so you can either answer that, you know, Nigeria obviously plays a huge part in your identity. That's it. Uh, Nigeria, my that's people. That's not even I don't the know language. why I clicked. We don't that's click. That's not that. That's the thing I did. 
I'm moaning it. So besides first gen, you can answer what Nigerian story you're pressed to see on screen. Or um, I often ask, like, just as a creative, I feel like so much of our journey is, if I just had this, I would pop. If I just had this, if you have, like right now, if you had to say, if I just have this, what would it be? So either of those questions, Ooh. and then I'll open up for audiences. I just um, myself if I mouth. just had this, I, w- I think if I just had my book finished, I would be happier. Because <laughs> I'm writing a book, y'all. It's, hey. I text you all the time, like, how did you do it? I didn't. I mean, I struggled. I was very, it was very isolating. It was phone calls. It was looking at, it was sitting at Starbucks, looking at other people having fun. And then it was done, but it was so lonely. Yeah, how, how, how long was this loneliness? Like a couple months or a year? Yeah, so I had a year to write it, which means as a procrastinator, I did it in a month. <laughs> Wait, you wrote the book in a month? I wrote the first like test chapter. Shout out to Don Davis. She was great. Met her at my like college reunion. She works at Simon and Schuster. And she was like, give me a test. And the test was the hardest part of just like, she gonna see this test and be like, never mind, we don't need a book from you. Shh. Just shh. And so once I turned that in and she approved it, I was like, oh, I got this. <laughs> the book, here it comes. And then I was like, it didn't come. <laughs> and then I was even more scared, and so I didn't write it until so I guess like in the middle of the, the book run, and then towards the end, I wrote it. So how long did it take you, Issa? I guess two months. Two months to write the book? The whole book? Yeah, but... No, that's phenomenal, because I'm trying to do it in two weeks. You got it. We'll, yes, we'll figure it out. You got it. We'll see. So that's your, if I just had if this... If I just had that, I'll be happier. I mean, I want I, you know me. I want to do a lot of things. I want to direct. I want to produce. I'm reading books. Like, if you're an African and you're an author or you have something, I'm like, I want to... I'm like, let, I want to bring those stories to life because for you to be, like, first gen or second gen, like, and be a creative, I, I already know how hard that journey was. So for me, I'm like, how do I help? How do I bring the story to life? Like, if, if my name will help your book become a movie or a TV show, like, let me help that. Um... So, yeah. Well, one of the things I struggle with is I always feel like, and this has propelled my career, and it's also just been, it served as crippling anxiety, is just like, I'm running out of time. I don't have much time. Do you ever feel that way, or is there something else that propels you to be like, I got to do this now. Let me stop making excuses. My thing is, I, this may sound morbid, but I do uh, death checks, which means, like, if I were to die today, would I, how would I feel? Yep. Like, would I, what would I be remembered for? Did I do everything I wanted to do up until this point that I could do? Should I have done more? Could I have done more? And if the answer to any of those questions is like, yeah, you actually could have done more, like you're not done, then it's like, well, then I got work to do. So it's, it's really weird, but I'm like, I, I feel like if God forbid anything happens today, like where would I be? And it's not, I, I have so much more that I want to do. So... I also don't know how long, because we've been in the, we've been in the season with the girlfriends, with Martin, with Fresh Prince, where there was like an influx of like black voices. Social media was different then, but like all those things went away. They were making networks money, and then some way somehow they were like, "Nah, we cool on y'all." And I don't know if that will happen again. Maybe we're so loud and resilient, and we have social media and hashtags to prevent that. But I don't know. So I got to just keep grinding. And I still got to retire my parents, so I'm not done. Amen. <clears throat> well, at this point, where um, while Yvonne is sipping from her Malibu and Sprite, we'd love to take questions from the audience. So much shade. And we also have a, a special alcoholic surprise Ooh. for, and I'm going to ask a trivia question. If you can answer this about Yvonne, you will, you will win our special Ciroc trivia prize that Denise will tell me where it's at. Oh, it's right next to me. You will win Ooh. a Ciroc versus. Is it versus so. or DS? <laughs> so that's what Stanford teaches you? That's what, that's. Cut the tape, cut the tape. Yeah, girl, give me your degree back. <laughs> you will win a Ciroc VS. No, 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 girl. A Ciroc versus. <laughs> it's new. It just hit the streets. New, new ish, new ish. DJ Clue, because when you drink it, you're going to want to fight these niggas. <laughs> versus you, versus whoever. Yo, Diddy, I love you, so rock versus. <laughs> Are they Converse? Are they shoes in there? It might be. There is some, <laughs> so rock making shoes. 
So, Rock, I'm sorry. Thank you for sponsoring us. I don't know what your alcohol is. They cut the sponsorship five seconds ago. <laughs> I know. They were like, this Cut the light. She we'll don't deserve us. Um, first question. <laughs> Hello? Oh, perfect. Hello. Hi, thank hey. you for having us. Thank you um, for coming. I wanted to ask Yvonne, and you as well, uh, what are you interested in right now as far as what's going on uh, other than insecure ideas, uh, things on media, talent? What is really piquing your personal interest right now? And I'm from Maryland, too, so what's okay, up? Okay, what part? Uh, Baltimore. Hi. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> sure. <laughs> What are you doing? I was so I was like, yeah, okay, well, yeah. I know. What's go go? No, I'm just I'm messing with you. I don't know. We I do, know. We yeah. do club music, but I know, you know, yeah. I feel like Western Maryland is like a whole different world. Like, well, God bless you. Thank Welcome. you. You, you made it out the wire. I did, girl. <laughs> girl. <laughs> <laughs> Answer her question. Um, I'm really interested. I just read this book called Freshwater. It's really like interesting and and dark and deep and very unlike anything I, like, I probably would ever do. Um, but it was just intriguing and I was like, maybe it's a, it's a play um, that I produce. I don't know, I'm, I'm really interested in do, for me personally as a creative, I wanna do like an action film, I wanna do a drama, I wanna like get dirty a little bit, like in terms of like monster, not like, you know, titties. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not even gonna take that. Okay. Areolas, no, not that. Um, it's like my favorite word. <laughs> um, yeah, so I want something that, that challenged me, that gets me out of the, the comfort zone of comedy, which comedy is, but for other people that I, I wanna, I wanna find something that I care about enough to like wanna produce or care about enough to be like, hey, maybe let me try directing that or, or writing that. I, I, I'm just, I'm trying to, do a lot of stuff, girl. Like once you once you get once they open the door, just keep going, just keep running, just figure it out, find stuff, help people find you stuff. I don't, just do everything. Tell and then tell your agents like, hey, give me something that you don't think would be for me, and bring that to me. Make them work. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your question. Do we have another one? You're messing one, up the first. One, uh, we're gonna do one more Patreon question. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hi. Are you my from name? Baltimore too? Oh no, I'm actually from Brooklyn, New York. Okay. I came out here, yeah. BK? <laughs> yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask, as uh, if you were an uh, executive producer on a documentary, what roles would you take? Like, what would you do to actually make that docu documentary come um, forward to the, audi to the broad audience? I would imagine find money. Definitely, yes. You would be, that, would, that would be your role? You would designate if, yourself to that role? If I'm an executive producer, we got to get it done. So we need, we all collectively need to find money, whoever's working yes. on that project. Yes. Um, and then find the right, well, if it's a documentary, it's based on something or somebody. But, like, put the pieces together. Where do you think you'd go first? Because money is, like, the hardest part. Well, you know, I know a prince in Africa. <laughs> Y'all got a lot of scammers, so you sure? Stab yourself. <laughs> He said, where is Senegal on the map? Where is, where is Senegal, it's exactly? In, on the west where, side, on the coast. West side of on nowhere. On the breast of it's Africa. It's a cliff. And it's, a, it's a blitz. It's, it's uh, burgeoning. It's you like, as I like going on. It's very peaceful. Is it peaceful. next to the Ciroc Versus? It's very... It's very, it's, it's very peaceful. It's, yeah. They don't drink. They're Muslims. No, so. I mean, where do you go to find money? I, mean, I, I, I would imagine, depending on what the documentary is about, you find somebody who could be interested in whatever that topic is, or try to sell them on like why they should be interested in what that topic is. J.P. Morgan and Chase, I just found this out um, when I did the Florence keynote today, um, <laughs> that they're giving money to like women, like female-led projects. So there's, there's, and then you're at the end of the year, there's so many people who are trying to get rid of money. That's a really good time to hit people up. Um, like for rent. You said what? Who specifically? I mean, just whoever has a budget that they have to clear by December 3rd.